Let's explore how Olex2 interacts with ShellX. So we've got a structure loaded. It's the structure CO110 that's uh, supplied with Olex2. And we want to work on this structure. So we go to the work area here and we have the solution settings and the refinement settings. So let's just concentrate on the refinement. There are a number of options. We've got Shell XL and Shell XL 97. So Shell XL is always the version of Shell XL that is first on the system path. So please Google for how to put things on the system path. Uh, that is the version that is used by default. So when you press refine, what happens is Olix2 generates an ins file from its own structure model. That ins file is copied to a refinement location, which you can explore here. So it's the hidden folder dot Olex. And in here is a temp folder. So in here, we copy the ins file and the HKL file, and then we start the refinement using Shellix in this folder. Once Shellix is finished, we copy the relevant files out of this folder back into the top level of this directory. So this means you could have a number of different HKL files against which you refine. And um, it will just copy that. It doesn't matter what it's called. It will copy it into that temporary folder and it will then manage everything by itself. So what's happened here is we press refine, it refines it, a rest file is generated in the temporary folder and that's copied back into the outer folder and what's displayed here is effectively the result file as an ins file. So there is no need to copy rest to ins or do any of those kind of things. So let me just show how this works. Let's say we um, make a mistake and we name this oxygen, so we type name O and we want to refine this, that's okay. So we press uh, refine or control R on the keyboard and this has become smaller. So this is obviously the result of the refinement we just had and it's, it's not correct. The affect has gone up and there's a big shift. So there's no need to copy rest to ins and, and also notice there isn't any need to edit any files at all. So really Olex2 is designed to not having to edit any files. So this goes a bit further. So let's just make this back into fluorine. I pick up the fluorine, uh, click on this. So this makes it a fluorine and refine this again. And we should be back. Uh, we've got um, we've got the um, uh, we've got a residual shift. Let's uh, refine again until this settles again. And now it's settled. If you wanted to put in some restraints, for example, I mean, in this case, you don't need the restraints, but if you wanted to um, put a restraint in that these three carbon fluorine distances are the same, you just select the three dis distances and type SADI, which is the familiar restraint for this particular um, uh, restraint you want to put on here. So this puts the PLASADI into the um, INS file once you press refine and, and, and it puts it in. So again, there's no need to actually edit the INS file at all. So it's all taken care of. If you now rename these atoms here, so we select some of those and we type name, I don't know, 111, um, F3 toggles the thing. So this is F111121113. Um, and if you refine this, the restraints will be stay in place just the same. So we can verify this. We select two of those items or any one, just one of them will do. And click on this symbol here, which shows you the relevant part of an INS file. So we don't show the whole INS file, but we know the SADI is in here. And the fact that those uh, atoms have been renamed has been taken care of completely by Olex2. So here I just briefly introduced well the, the, the concept of the file. So you can actually get to the files. This button here shows you the instruction part of the file. So this is everything before the atom list. And this one shows you the atoms in the file in a sort of shellix type representation. The difference here of course is if we select nothing you get all the atoms and if you only select one atom like I've done here and I just show this again you now select you see only this one atom but everything that we know about this atom for example the fact that there is a SADI on it is also displayed so all the dependencies or everything that depends on that atom is also shown. Right, so 
between these tools, the graphical interface and the, 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 the ability to edit something in a file here, you, you can do everything you want. On the other hand, we really discourage people to edit these files. You can if you want to, but there is really no need to do this. Again, this is a very artificial example. If you wanted this to be in part one, what you need to do is to select the atoms and type part one. That's it. It's putting it into part one. So there is no need to um, to edit the, um, the files in any way. If you did want to edit the file, you can type edit ins and this does exactly what it will do when you press refine so it edits it creates an ins file um, and that's the full shellix ins file as it will be sent to shellix l so now we are listening for this file so any changes you make in this file will be taken over by olex2 but again i really don't see the need to do this so if i wanted to call the co1 and i save this file then uh, if I press F3, this is now called CO1. So in a way, you do have a live editor. Or what I pressed here was F2, which toggles the uh, dark background uh, and the white background. F3 hides the labels again. So in a way, with this command, which I can get back by pressing the up key on the keyboard, edit ins, you sort of have a live interface. So any changes you make here, once you save, it will be reflected in all X2. But really, you shouldn't need to do that at all. We can't really think of any any reason to, to ever use that and ever edit a file. Uh, but please, if, if you do come across a case where you really can't do something from the GUI and you need to edit the file, we would love to hear about it because that is probably something where we either do something wrong or this is a situation where we need to find a solution. Um, but Typically, you really shouldn't have to edit the files at all. We extract some information out of the files, for example, the refinement indicator. So this is a quick view into the um, listing file. Of course, if you did want to examine the listing file, it's edit LST. So this brings up the full listing file uh, as, as Shellix has reduced it, uh, has, has, uh, has produced it. So you can look at this file here. Okay, this is all I want to say about this right now. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for using Olix too.